This is Mrs. Appiah with Lesson 18 in Module 2, Writing, Evaluating, and Finding Equivalent Expressions with Rational Numbers. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students create equivalent forms of expressions in order to see structure, reveal characteristics, and make connections to context. Students compare equivalent forms of expressions and recognize that there are multiple ways to represent a context of a word problem. Students write and evaluate expressions to represent real-world scenarios. The essential question, what is an expression, how do you evaluate it, and how do you determine if two expressions are equivalent? Exercise 1. John's father asked him to compare several different cell phone plans and identify which plan will be the least expensive for his family. Use the information contained in the table below to answer the following questions. Write an expression for each company that could be used to determine the cost of the plan. Uh, first, we'll go over what an expression is when it says to write an expression. An expression is a combination of numbers or variables and operations like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. It can be a product, a sum, a difference, or a quotient. So in our cell phone plans, we have company A, and they charge a monthly fee of $70, and that includes 1,500 shared minutes. Then the price per phone line is an additional $20 per line. For unlimited texting, it's another $15 per line. And for internet access, it's another $15 per line. So to determine the cost for company A, you would have to pay $70 just to have that company for your cell phone. In addition to that, you have to pay $20 per phone line. $20 per phone line is $20 times the number of phone lines. And they're telling us to use the variable x. So 20 times x is 20x. In addition to that, you would pay for texting. And y will represent the number of phone lines for texting. At $15 per line, that will be written as 15 times y, which is 15y. Additionally, in order to get internet access or data, it's $15 per line. Z will represent the number of lines for the internet. So 15 times the number of phone lines is 15 times Z, which we write as 15Z. So this is the expression to determine the cost of using phone company A. For phone company B, you have to pay $90 just to use their service. That is a constant cost. In addition, you will pay $15 per phone line. So that's 15 times the number of phone lines, 15x. Additionally, you pay $10 per line for texting. So that is $10 times the number of lines, which is Y, 10Y. Also, you will pay for internet access, $20 per phone line. 20 times Z is 20Z. So you'll see that in company B, you pay a little bit more per month, but the cost per line is cheaper, the cost per texting is cheaper, and the cost per data is more expensive. For company C, now you will use $200 for a monthly fee for company C, and that seems very expensive. In addition to that, you will pay $10 per phone line. So if you had one phone line, it would be $10. If you had two phone lines, it would be $20. If you had three loan phone lines, it would be $30. Since we don't know the number of lines, we write 10 times X, which is 10X. In addition to that, there is oh, no monthly fee for texting and no monthly fee for internet. It is included in the $200. These are the expressions that help you compare the cost of each phone line. 
Using the expression, find the cost to the family if each company's phone plan. Four people want to a phone line. Four people want unlimited texting. And the family needs two internet connections. So the number of people that want phone lines is four. So x will equal four. And the number of people wanting texting will be four. So y equals four. And two people want internet. So z is equal to two. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute each of these values for that variable. So we have $70 plus 20 times 4 plus 15 times 4 plus 15 times 2. So I have replaced each variable with the number of phone lines, internet lines, and data lines. Then you evaluate the expression by doing the math. 70 plus 80 plus 60 plus 30. And when we evaluate that, that comes to a total of $240 using phone company A. Now we'll use the same values for X, Y, and Z and find out if company B is going to be more expensive or less expensive. So we have, I'm going to switch colors. $90 plus 15 times 4 phone lines plus 10 times 4 text lines plus 20 times 2 data lines. That's 90 plus 60 plus 40 plus 40. And that gives us a total of $230. So it is a little bit cheaper. And for company C, we only have to pay for the phone lines because the data and texting is included. So we want four people. So we have $200 for the monthly payment plus $10 times the number of phone lines. So 200 plus 40 and our total is 240. And this is how we compare the different phone companies. So which cell phone company should John's family use and why? Well, look at the, the three values, 240, 230, and 240. Would you want to pay more or less? We will use company B since it is cheaper than the others for the given values. For section B, four people want a phone line four people want unlimited texting, and all four people want internet lines. So take a moment and write down the expressions for company A, company B, and company C, as I have done here. Then we want four people for a phone line, four people for texting, and four people want internet. So X will equal four, y will equal 4, and z will equal 4. And I would like you to substitute the values for the variables and determine the cost for company A, company B, and company C for this situation. And then determine which cell phone company John's family should use and why. Pause the video until you are done and then check your answer. And you can see that in this case, company C is the better value, although it seemed more expensive at first. Pause the video and complete the process for situation C. Two people want the phone line, so X is equal to 2. Two people want texting, so Y is equal to 2. And the family needs two internet lines, so Z is equal to 2. Complete the cost for company A, B, and C, and see which company John's family should use. Resume the video when you're ready to check your answer. For the family who wants two phone lines, two text lines, and two internet lines, the cheapest company will be company A. 
So just think about these following questions. You do not need to write them down in your notes. Why is there no equal sign in the expressions? There's no equal sign because when we write expressions, there aren't, that is not an equation. It doesn't tell you what it's equal to. Each plan charges for four different options, yet there are only three variables in each question. Why is this? There are only three variables used because the monthly fee is added to the options regardless of how many lines are purchased. What would be the minimum cost for each plan? The minimum cost for each plan would be the monthly fee and no other options. Company A would be 70, Company B would be 90, and Company C would be $200. What role did the expression play in your decision-making process? Writing an expression allowed us to evaluate and compare the different companies for many different values of each variable. Describe the process you use to arrive at the total cost. First, the given values for each variable are substituted into the expression, so every variable is replaced with a corresponding numerical value. After that, you do the arithmetic following the order of operations. This is a very good way to, to compare phone company plans Many people find it confusing and they just select a plan, but this is a way where you can actually figure out how much your plan will cost you. Three friends went to the movies. Each purchased a medium-sized popcorn for P dollars and a small soft drink for S dollars. Write the expression that represents the total amount of money in dollars the three friends spent at the concession stand. Pause the video and write the expression. There are several different expressions that we could write for this problem. We're going to use P for dollars. And S for the soft drink. So P for the popcorn dollars and S for the soft drink dollars. And we know that we are purchasing three. So one of the ways that you could do that is you could um, figure the cost of one popcorn and one soda and then you could multiply it times three people. Another way that you could do it is you could pay for three popcorns plus three sodas and add those together. Another way that you could do it is you could have one person paying for popcorn plus soda plus another person paying for popcorn and soda plus another person paying for popcorn and soda. So there are three different and equivalent expressions that you could find the total amount of money the friend spent at the concession stand. If the concession stand charges $6.50 for a medium-sized popcorn and $4 for a small soft drink, how much did the three friends spend on their refreshments altogether? So the popcorn is $6.50. So that means that P is going to be replaced with $6.50. And the soda is $4. So the S is going to be replaced with $4. When you replace these values in your expression, you can leave off the remaining zeros. So for soda, you can just use 4 because 4 is equivalent to 4.0. And you can use 6.5 instead of 6.50 because they are equivalent. So choose one of the expressions to find the value of the cost and then pause the video before checking your answer. I used the first expression, substituted, substituted the values 6.5 plus 4 is 10.5, and 3 times 10.5 is 31.50. And then do the other expressions and see if you'll get the same answer or a different answer. And then resume the video to check your answer. What you'll notice is that the cost of the concession is the same no matter which expression you used. They're uh, 31.50 for each one. And Notice that here you're multiplying 3 times 1050, and here is the repeated addition, which is 3 times 1050. 
And in the middle problem, this is paying for the popcorn separately from the soda and then adding them together, whereas these are the cost of one popcorn and one soda, and then there are three groups of that. Also, notice the distributive property being used in these expressions, where you're multiplying uh, the product of a number and a sum is the sum of the first number and the second number. So the amount of spent, the amount of money spent at the refreshment stand is $31.50. Turn the page to the summary section. In this lesson, you have learned an expression is a number or a letter which can be raised to a whole number exponent. An expression can be a product whose factors are any one of the entities described above. An expression can be the sum or difference of the products described above. To evaluate an expression, replace each variable with its corresponding numerical value. Use order of operations. The expression can be written as a single numerical value. When numbers are substituted into all the letters in an expression and the results are the same, then the expressions are equivalent.